안녕하세요. 관악서울대학교 치과병원 치주과 정재은입니다. Greetings, I'm Professor Jeun Jung, a periodontalist, Seoul National University, Kwanak Dental Hospital. Today, I'm going to talk about a case of maxillary posterior implant placement with sinus elevation. A 62-year-old male patient with a chief complaint of discomfort at number 16 and 17 at the upper right posterior region. Initial panorama shows number 16 and 17 had alveolar bone loss. At the initial visit, peri-epical x-ray and clinical photos due to the progressed bone loss number 16 and 17 will be extracted and implant will be placed later. Clinical photo three months after the extraction, here extraction socket is very well healed. Fortunately, the patient's reach width, the width is pretty well maintained. However, if you check this panoramic image at the extraction site, due to the pneumatization in the maxillary sinus, the available alveolar bone height is very much limited, that we can expect. Through the CT, patient's alveolar bone condition was confirmed. At the site of 16 and 17, teeth were lost due to the pneumatization in the maxillary sinus. The available alveolar bone height is expected to be very restricted. Sinus floor came down here. Available bone height would be approximately 3 to 4 and 4 to 5 millimeters. So it was decided that we will get enough stability when implanted implant is placed. Therefore, implant placement simultaneously with bone grafting in the sinus was planned. For the sinus bone grafting, CRISO approach can be done, but in this case, two implants were to be placed and that there was uh, not much residual bone, so lateral approach was decided on. Sequence of sinus bone grafting with lateral approach is as follows. First, as I marked on the CT, on the lateral wall, a window is created. To create a window, I usually use a straight angle around the burr. After creating a window, Schneiderian membrane is detached and lifted. We need to be careful not to tear the membrane. After membrane lifting, bone grafting is performed. At this stage, not 100% of sinus is filled with bone graft. Usually, I fill it about three quarters. After the bone grafting, I do drilling to place implants. After the drilling, implants are placed at the determined positions and the further bone grafting is performed. Before implant placement, I did the design using one guide for position number 16 and 17. Approximately the residual bone was 4 millimeters at number 17 position. If you look at the guide design, the bone quality is very low, so it is expected that bone contact would be very limited, leading to very low stability for this. When we do drilling for surgery, we can do under drilling to increase the stability. Sinus grafting using lateral approach. The most important thing is that the membrane should remain intact without a hole while being detached and lifted. Lifting may not work very well in the inside indicated with arrow on the right hand side. Patient should be in a supine position. Here an oval shaped lateral window is created. During sinus lifting, bone goes to the distal side without a problem. Often bone is not easily put to the front side, so sinus membrane should be properly detached and lifted. So slightly you need to pack the bone mesially. A buccal window was created and the bone may not go to the palatal side sufficiently, so the membrane should be lifted to the palatal side for bone grafting. Sutured after 
surgery, as I said before, at number 17 position, the implant stability was low, so a healing abutment was not connected. The implant was submerged and uh, left to heal. Sinus uh, grafting with lateral approach it doesn't require two-stage implant placement. With a good stability, the healing of the can be connected. Stitches were taken out after about two weeks. There was no sign of infection and the gum is very well healed. Post of panorama, as I said before, Distally, bone grafting can be done without a special effort. Therefore, grafted material should be put to the mesial side. The membrane should be detached and raised. And grafted material needs to be applied by pushing it inside. At number 16 and 17, Austin TS 5 by 10 millimeter implants. Two of them were placed using sinus grafting with xenograft. Let's check out a video containing the surgical process explained up to now. Thank you. Thank you. 